Hey, what's happening, guys? Well, after promising that I wouldn't take another seven months for my next devlog, only to take almost another year between updates, I think it's safe to say I probably shouldn't be making any more predictions. I got caught up in a bunch of other hobbies and took about nine months off, but that said, I do actually have quite a lot to show. These are probably the smallest and more boring changes, so I'll get them out of the way first. So one of the first things I did after my last devlog is allow for dual wielding. You can now equip daggers in the offhand slot. And down the road, I'll probably be adding specific offhand items, which aren't shields or daggers. There'll be things like books and magical items for mage classes to use for extra stat points. After that, I remade some of my spell particles for my spell effects. I also made it so the Divine Fury spell looks different depending on which type of item you have equipped. Then I added text warnings. You get a warning if you try to use an ability that requires an equipped weapon, if your weapon slot is empty. You get a warning if you try to use an ability and you have the wrong type of equipped weapon. And you'll also get a warning if you try to use an ability without the required mana. So from there, I made up some foliage textures in Photoshop and thought it was about time the game had some trees. So I, um, I made one tree. I also finally got around to adding the equipable slots for armor and jewelry. I've remade the art for several items, as well as added an absolute ton of art for the new equipable items, especially for the new armor slot. The player now appropriately shows no armor while armor isn't equipped. There are now 115 equipable items in game, 17 of which are armor sets. Alright, now on to the more interesting stuff, enemy NPCs. When you mouse over an enemy NPC, the cursor will change to a dagger to indicate the NPC is unfriendly. I added some simple enemy targeting, showing floating health bars above the enemy heads while selected, as well as showing their names and level. Their health and other info will also show at the top of the screen as well, showing more relevant info including their stats and active buffs and debuffs. Enemy NPCs will chase the player if they come within aggression range. They'll face the player correctly, changing from right and left character art at appropriate times while in aggro range. Enemy NPCs will attack the player and deal damage to their health bar while in combat range during a combat cycle, as you would expect. If the player leaves the NPC's aggro range or gets too far from their spawn point, the NPC will exit combat, their health will return to 100%, and they'll return to their spawn point. On their profile, next to their health bar at the top of the screen, you'll see whether or not the NPC has a potion equipped. If a potion icon appears to the right of the health bar, the NPC will have the potential to enter their health potion event. There is also a potion that appears at the NPC's belt, so players will be able to see the enemy has a potion equipped before entering combat. If the enemy's health drops below 50% of their maximum health, and they have a health potion equipped, the NPC will enter a drink potion event where they'll play a drinking animation and partially heal themselves. When the NPC dies, they'll play a death animation and a loot button will appear at the top of the screen allowing you to loot them. During combat, if the enemy receives any buffs or debuffs, a small icon will appear below their profile with a timer indicating the duration of the ability. If the NPC is hit with the bleed ability, they'll receive a damage over time debuff and a blood spatter particle animation will play. If the player's apply poison ability is active while attacking, the enemy will receive a poison debuff, they'll take damage over time, and their health bar will turn green. NPCs can also receive a stun or snare debuff, in which all of their other events will pause till the timer on the debuff runs out. Okay, so what am I going to be working on next? 
I think I'll mostly be continuing on with enemy NPC behavior, adding new combat events and maybe some spells and abilities that they can use in synergy to fight the player. I was also considering adding character traits, which would affect how the NPC reacts to different situations. For instance, say they have a cowardice trait, where if the trait is too high, the NPC is more likely to cower or flee from combat. If the trait is extremely high, maybe the NPC begins fleeing while they still have half health. Or maybe they even try to avoid combat altogether. Another trait might be apathy, where an NPC is less likely to aggro whilst their allies are being attacked nearby. Or they could have sadism, in which case they might have access to a large arsenal of damage over time abilities to torture the player with. Regardless, like I said, I think I'm mostly going to be focusing on combat for the next little while and probably add some more environment art so there's actually something for the player to explore. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll have another devlog up again soon. So if you'd like to keep up with my weekly progress outside of YouTube, or if you're an indie game creator yourself and want to show off your own game, I've set up a Discord where indie game developers can come together, collaborate, show off their own work, or even just chat all things game design. I also have an absolute ton of tutorials prepared for new creators uh, for many different programs, as well as plenty of game design related media to keep people motivated and entertained. So for those who are interested, you can find the link in the description. All that said guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.